I'm Alistair Greener. I'm Gemma Clark. And this is The Swindon Show. Hello and welcome to the Swindon Show, coming to you from the heart of Swindon here at the Steam Museum. And this week I'm joined by guest presenter Gemma Clark. Thanks Alistair. Well we hope you had a lovely Easter break and enjoyed last week's show from Rove's Farm. If you want to watch any of our previous shows, you can catch them on our website, theswindonshow.com. Now you've really got to come down to this place, it's amazing and very much at the core of Swindon's history. Now remember, we want to hear from you, so please do discuss us on Twitter, hashtag The Swindon Show, on Facebook, or even email us, studio at theswindonshow.com. Excellent. Well, let's see what's on the show this week. Our What's On Guide, give you this week's best places to eat in Swindon in our Eating Out Guide. We look at Steam's connection with the Titanic. We hear from you, the people of Swindon in Swindon Voices. Check out the latest sports news with Peter Mannion. We look at a new Jubilee pocket watch being made in Swindon. Have a look at some great competitions. And to end the show, we show you a music video from local singer and songwriter Alice Offley. As part of their regular Tuesday night of live jazz, Baker Street are hosting a performance from a showcase special, the Simon Spillett Quartet. Simon is the reigning tenor saxophonist of the year, so the show is sure to be engaging and entertaining. Count Arthur Strong's new show, Command Performance, is coming to the Wyvern Theatre on Wednesday. You'll never have seen anything like it, according to the man himself. Bella Rouge would like to invite you to an evening of bands and burlesque at the Vic on Thursday. For your pleasure and tease, they have a mixture of new performers and more experienced ladies of the burlesque world. The band performing on the night is none other than Josie and the Outlaw. One of the star performers on BBC Radio's Unbelievable Truth, news quiz and now show Henning Vane is coming to the Arts Centre on Friday. The self-appointed German comedy ambassador to the UK will be performing his sellout Edinburgh show, No Surrender. On Saturday, you can enjoy the sounds of the Foo Fighters, the UK's premier Foo Fighters tribute act at Riffs Bar. There's a lot of competition out there, but all the members of the Foo Fighters are confident they are up to the job of being the UK's best Foo Fighters tribute band. You know what, there is so much to see here that uh, you need a guide. Fortunately, I've got Elaine Arthurs, who is the collection officer here at STEAM. And Elaine, just in case somebody hasn't been here before, could you give us a very quick idea of what there is here? Well, we've got all the obvious things, like the big locomotives and wonderful carriages. Um, we've also got some great interactives for children and family, um, as well as some really lifelike models that bring the, the story of the Great Western Railway to life. I must admit, a few of them have caught me out yeah. there, so lifelike. Now, I know you're always updating the exhibits as well, aren't you? Yeah, we are. I mean, we're always having new exhibitions on, um, and we've just purchased some new interactives for children as well, so it's a great place for families to come. So if you haven't been here for a well, come back yeah, soon. Yeah, definitely. Now, it is Jubilee year. Yes. Now, there's always been a royal, strong royal connection, hasn't there, with the royal family. We were just in Queen Victoria's saloon. Yes. Well, she made her first journey on the railway with the Great Western Railway in 1842. The Great Western Railway made all their carriages, and obviously they named their locomotives after kings and queens as well. So bringing the Jubilee to the current monarch, of course, we're celebrating here at STEAM as well with that, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. We've got the Royal Road exhibition on at the moment, um, which celebrates all things royal in the Great Western Railway. And we've got some amazing objects on show, um, including a fabulous um, clock from Queen Victoria's Royal Waiting Room at Windsor and some artefacts relating to our present Queen and her relationship with the railways. Fantastic. So do come along and have a look. and You can see it just right behind us here. And uh, thank you very much indeed for showing us You're around. Welcome. Really, really appreciate that. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more to Elaine about another connection with Swindon and GWR. And that's something that's very hot in the news this week. And that is, of course, Titanic. But first, it's time to find out more about this week's Eating Out Guide with Gemma.
We all know there are burgers and there are burgers, but Rudy's, we have to say, know how to serve the gourmet variety. And every Tuesday, their buy one, get one half price. We've tasted them and can definitely vouch they are almost enough to fill you for the week. If you enjoy hassle-free, simple food at lunchtime, the Highworth have got just that. Their new spring summer lunchtime special lets you enjoy a range of traditional dishes, including a glass of house wine, beer, ale, soft drink and a complimentary coffee for just £10. There's even some delicious desserts on offer if you can handle them midday. And if you fancy your food a little bit more laid back, why not try the Sunday menu at Long's Bar, served from 12 till 5pm, an ideal for late risers. Choice includes a complete selection of light bites and of course a traditional Sunday roast. Three courses include wine for just £17. This sounds like the ideal start to the weekend to us. Food is served in the Glasshouse restaurant from 7 till 9.30pm with booking highly recommended. The hotel of course also offers an ideal place to stay the night if you do fancy making a complete weekend of it. As we all know, 2012 is a major year. We've got the Olympics, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, but it's also a very important year for maritime history as we commemorate the 100th anniversary of the tragic sinking of the Titanic. Well, here at STEAM, there's an amazing connection between Titanic and Great Western Railways, and Elaine Arthurs here has uh, shown me some of these amazing documents that you've got. Yeah, well, we discovered these in our archive a couple of years ago, and as soon as I saw the word Titanic, my ears pricked up. I thought, they're really, really special. Um, we've got a couple of items. We've got a letter dating from 1910. Um, from the Great Western's Liverpool office. Well, that's something which will surprise many people yes. because you hear about God's wonderful railway yes. being in the southwest, but actually reaching up as far as Liverpool. It did indeed, um, and they're writing to the London office to confirm the building of Titanic and her sister ship Olympic. And of course, GWR advertised frequently with White Star Line, who ran Titanic as well, didn't they? So there was quite a strong connection. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Great Western Railway provided networked um, transportation to all the different ports that the, the shipping companies went from. And one of the shareholders of Great Western Railway sadly perished in the accident as well. Yes, Christopher Head. Um, we've got some documents here which are between the Great Western Railway and uh, Firma Solicitors. And the Great Western Railway are confirming that he actually died on the Titanic so they could release his shares. And after doing a little bit of delving on the internet, I was able to find out a little bit more about Christopher. And he was a first class passenger, he was Mayor of London, and unfortunately his body was never recovered. Well, thank you for showing all of this. It's remarkable. And if you want to see it, please do come on down here to Steam. Now, there are a lot of new events coming up as well. Give us maybe an idea of some of the things coming up this summer. We mentioned the Olympics. We've got our Olympic exhibition, um, which focuses on the Great Western Railway and all things sporting. So we've got some great memorabilia. Um, it's going to be a really fun exhibition. Um, and we've got an opening of a new cafe at the museum as well, which opens on the 1st of May. So that's a really exciting addition. Well, everybody who watches this show knows how I like food, so yes. I'll be back. <laughs> so if you haven't been here for a while, make sure you come back. Lean Arthurs, again, thank you very much indeed thank for showing you. us around today. Now, you should have had one of these local election cards through your door recently. So I asked the people of Swindon whether they really do care about the upcoming elections. What are your thoughts on the local elections? Do you think they're going to affect you in any way? It depends who gets when the power of the Tories or the Labour. If it's the Labour, it could affect us to a better way. And because I don't believe in a Conservative Party down the street or local elections, you know, so. Oh, I haven't really given it a lot of thought because I think they're all rubbish at the moment, the Conservative, Labour and Liberals. I've got no time for any of them at the moment. Why so is I that? don't the state of the country. What are they doing about everything? They're just doing nothing whatsoever. It's an absolute disgrace. It really is. Sorry, I've got a bus to catch. Uh, if you don't vote, you can't moan, and I love to moan. <laughs> don't think it would make any difference, quite honest with you. I don't know who's going to win. Everything's... Uh, I can't understand the logic sometimes. We, we bought a water feature. What was it? £260,000. Uh, and at the same time, chopped our allowance to dial a ride so that people get in to town. Place is closing. What we need is more phone shops. 
There must be 10. Charity shops seem to be booming. Pawnbrokers are back. I remember when you could get two slices of bread, I mean, brown and white. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'm a real moaner. Do you know anything about the local elections in Swindon? No, we don't really know about it. Not Why really. do you think that is? I don't think it's advertised enough. Like, you don't really hear people talk about it either. So, it's... so if you did know when the date was to vote in the elections, do you think you would find out a bit about it? Yeah, I think because if it's to do with our like, if it's to do with Swindon, you obviously want to know because it's like where I live, so you want to know what's going on there. So I think that'll be really helpful. Okay. It's more advertised. Oh, I don't know. Not really interested in it, to be honest. Is there a reason for that? Um, no, just don't really bother. Don't really take much notice. Okay. That's really bad, I know. <laughs> uh, they come around every year. I vote, as usual, um, and we see if there are any changes. Do you think it makes any difference whether you vote or not? I hope it does, um, but I'm just one person amongst thousands, so um, I've really no idea. I don't really have a view on it. I don't trust our government system at all. Do you know who your local MP is in Swindon? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't really vote. Um, I don't believe in voting. Okay. No, 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 it won't affect us at all, I don't think. Why is that? Well, because nothing ever changes. It's always the same, you know, all false promises and nothing ever happens. We're here outside the county ground following Swindon's 1-0 victory over Plymouth. It was a bit of a bittersweet victory if we've just heard that Paolo de Canio's mum has died, so our condolences go to him and his family. Now, Swindon's promotion party is on hold just for one more game. They can play Aldershot on Tuesday night. As we said, a point will secure promotion, and three points, who knows, they could secure the league. Here's what the fans thought of the game. Your thoughts on today's match then, sir? Yeah, it's good, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, got the goal eventually in the end. Yeah, it's all about the win in the end, really, wasn't it? About it. Yeah, they come spoil it, didn't they? Yeah, they just wanted to sit back behind the ball and hope to it's on the break, especially when they brought Fletcher on late. I thought perhaps we might sneak one, but yeah, we did the job. The game wasn't too bad. It was a bit better, really, but at the end of the day, we got what we needed, 1-0. I think we were the better team, even though it wasn't the best of games, but what we wanted. And the, the other results seemed to be 0-0 last week, heard, but we'll draw in, so... Yeah. Well, midweek, all the shot. <laughs> We'll be there, and hopefully, come next Saturday, we'll be champions. Um, yeah, I thought it was good. We could have got a few more goals, but yeah, glad we got one at the end. So hopefully, we should definitely be getting up as champions. Yeah. What was your man of the match today? Um, oh, Paolo for coming actually, because if my mum had died, I don't know if I'd have been there. So yeah. Yeah, it was good, tough. We're grinding them out. That's about the nature of it. Although they played well today, I thought. Plymouth yep. were a hard side, and I thought we played some decent football. Yeah. Some, so some sad, sad news about yeah. sad news about Paolo de Canio, yeah, well, yeah, isn't it? Was, it? Well, I don't know. It asks a lot of a man to stand there and do that, doesn't it? And yeah. Still try to keep encouraging others when he must be sick as a dog. I don't know how he must have felt. Well, your, your thought, your overriding thoughts on the season, it's, it couldn't have gone much better, couldn't it? No, no, I was one of those who was. I, did, I doubted whether Decadio would have the managerial sort of capability. And I thought he's proved that, I think, hasn't he? And, uh, and it's been great to watch. Well, it was a really, really tough game, actually. I thought they played us really, really well, but our um, the fact that we can just outshine the team at the end of the game is just brilliant. And Alan Connell to get that goal at the end, love him, love him, love him, love him. Yeah. Uh, it was a bit dicey until the last few minutes, but uh, they got there. Brilliant. They left it late, do you think they deserved the goal in the end? Oh, it, 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 Plymouth just came for a, for a point, didn't they? They didn't really offer much at all, but um, yeah, it was it was good. Oh, it was all right. Job done. Yeah, yeah, one 0 Pretty much there now, aren't they? Yeah. Hold the shot Tuesday to seal it. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, go up as champions. It was good. Um, first half, we played all right. Um, I thought. I mean, we just need to learn how to get the ball in the ball in the back of the net. If you know what I mean. It looks like Plymouth uh, came for the draw. Um, would you go along with that? Um, yeah, I would. I mean, they didn't seem a big threat. If you know, if like we were attacking throughout the game, they were mostly defending, and doing long balls, which Crawley did, and it got nowhere, and we thrashed them three 0 So Plymouth come up and they had to do what they had to do, didn't they? They had to sit behind the ball and we had to go and break them down. And unfortunately, when you got Benson and that, look, look, Murray up front, it never really works. But as soon as you get Connor along. Every, it sort of lifts the whole game, so yeah, it's good. It's good. Showing back to Kanye and his mum, though, because you know, oh, you're right. all, all the fans were waiting for him. But obviously, family comes first, so all, all the best to him and his family. So, um, what do you think of the match today? Good. Yeah. Who's your favourite player? Matt Ritchie. Yeah. 
Why is he your favourite player? Because he does what I do. What, score lots of goals? No, no. strike it over the other side of the field. <laughs> so he's a good crosser of the ball? Yeah. You happy that Swindon are going to get promoted? Yeah. Yeah? What do you, what do you think about Palo de Cane this season? Very, very good. Yeah? <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks for your thoughts, man. Meanwhile, for Swindon Supermarine, the fight against relegation continues. They've now got two games to save their season. Despite being one point ahead of the relegation zone at the start of this week, they lost against table-topping Brackley. The Robins are at home to current champions Coventry on Monday, and then they've got two further meets on Wednesday and Friday. Wow, this place is really fascinating. Thanks for that great report, Peter. And of course, Swindon supporters have been counting down the minutes on the Deacon's Rolex clock on the Stratton Bank for nearly 50 years. And now it's a great pleasure to speak to Ian Surtees, who's commercial manager for Steam, and Richard Deacon, whose great-great-uncle started off Deacon's Family Jewellers, who are now in their sixth generation, starting with original George Deacon, who was here to keep Great Western Railway on time. So it's perfect that we're marking the Queen's Diamond Jubilee with uh, these beautiful sets of pocket watches. Uh, absolutely, Alistair. Yes, we really wanted to do something that reflected um, in our, if you like, our connection to the railway going back to uh, Victorian England and when it all started um, way back when George um, set up uh, the business of Deacons. Um, it seemed very appropriate that we uh, should do uh, something that reflected the Jubilee so that um, we have got our Queen Elizabeth a range of pocket watches. Um, the dials are actually based on an original pocket watch um, that we supplied to the railway in about 1870. Now this is, this is great because it, it, it's something that obviously for you as a family it means an awful lot because you, know, you were here at the beginning with Great Western Railway and effectively have come through the generations with Great Western Railway and to design a watch which is, I'll just pick this up, so if maybe you could talk us through uh, the actual watch. This is the gold plated one. Yes, so this actually, this watch is um, a half hunter pocket watch which would have been um, used by probably one of the um, GWR managers as opposed to perhaps uh, a guard on the back of the train. Um, so it, it's covered, it has a porthole so you can actually see uh, the time um, through the actual outer case. It also has uh, dial figures on the outer case as well so um, very very good visually to, to, to know instantly what the, the time is. And I like the bit, the fact that you've got the Queen Elizabeth which you were saying earlier on was from the nameplate. Uh, yes, from, from, from an original um, locomotive um, called Queen Elizabeth, yes. Um, and also the GWR logo as well. Um, also, we, we wanted to make something that was mechanical that would reflect, um, you know, something that would have been authentic to the time that we originally supplied watches of this nature to the railway. Now, you actually have these, are, I understand, a limited edition. We've got up to a thousand available of each of these watches. Um, so that we've tried to produce something, uh, frankly, that's affordable, um, that can reach a mass market. Um, but we've also tried to keep um, a very nice quality item that some you know, people can actually keep. Um, but not only that, they're, they're wonderful presents for things like uh, anniversaries, weddings, um, or just simply for somebody to keep them uh, celebrate the Jubilee. And I have to say they're very, very reasonable. They start at, I think it's 69.99? Uh, they start at 69.95. Um, that's for the uh, chrome-plated open-face pocket watch. Um, the gold-plated Half Hunter is the most expensive one at 99.95. We have actually also produced um, 10 in solid gold. Uh, which are very, very special. Um, they will actually come to the market just shortly before the actual Jubilee. Um, so just 10 of those, um, and they will be £6,950. I was going to say put my name down for one, but uh, maybe if I want to really, really treat myself. Uh, so Ian, of course, you're going to be promoting them here at Steam, really completing the connection. That's right. It's great for the museum to be working with Deacons and to continue that that long heritage and history of the railways in Swindon, working with Deacons in Old Town, so it's a great partnership. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much indeed for coming and chatting to us today. Uh, great souvenirs and uh, what a wonderful memento and one of the nicest mementos, I must say, of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.
In a moment, we've got a stunning music video from local singer-songwriter Alice Offley, who'll be performing on this show very soon. But firstly, let me tell you about some of our current competitions. We've teamed up with a whole host of clubs, pubs, shops and other top attractions in the Swindon area to offer you some fabulous free competitions throughout the year. We've got some fantastic competitions on Swindon Web this week, including the chance to win. Two VIP tickets to watch Dave Bam Bam Gregory meets Dennis the Menace Jones in the ring on a night of white collar boxing at Mecca. Four tickets to a sporting charity dinner with the chance to meet rugby stars Lewis Moody, Mike Tyndall, Roy Lawson and Peter Buxton at the Devere Village Hotel. And all you have to do to enter is visit the page on the screen now. If you have a smartphone, you can scan the barcode to be taken straight there. Winners will be contacted by phone and email. For full terms and conditions, please see the competitions page. Well, we've had a fabulous day here at Steam in Swindon, so a massive thank you to Ian Surtees, Elaine Arthurs and the entire team for making us feel so welcome. Thank you as well to Richard Deacon. Thank you for being such a wonderful co-host, Gemma. And thank you for watching. Now, don't forget, we do want to hear from you. So discuss us on Twitter, hashtag The Swindon Show, Facebook, or even email us, studio at theswindonshow.com. We certainly do want to hear from you. Well, I've had a fabulous day presenting with you, Alistair. Thank you very much. But for now, to play us out, it's Alice Offley. Bye for now. Goodbye. Now, where's that cafe? I don't know, but it's your turn to say.